Hey everyone, Paul Ice here, and welcome to part 2 of our Fujimi 116th Lamborghini Koenig Countach. So, we started this, oh, it's well over a month ago now. Uh, I've had other projects on the go, um, trying to work things around things. So, it's kind of been put, not on the back burner, it's just sat there simmering, is what we're going to say. But we're here today. Today's goal is to get the chassis, suspension, brakes, engine and wheels done that is the goal today so a lot of work and a lot of work to get into a 40 odd minute video which is what i always strive to try and get so as usual no beating around the bush we get into it get things done fast i'm not going to dwell you don't need to see me prime 600 parts or glue every single part in place so i'm going to stick with all the important bits anything i think is an important point of the build and uh, hopefully end up with a decent looking engine now as i say at the end um, there's a bit more detail we can add. There's a lot more hoses than that. I don't want to commit to putting them in yet in case it fouls in the other part, in the opening body parts. There's a few parts that sit inside as well. I don't want to commit to that yet. So we're going to get it all assembled. Um, and then we'll have a look what we can add. We'll add some hose work near the end to make it just a bit more interesting in there. So let's, uh, let's get started and uh, get working on our chassis. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, so chassis, suspension, engine today is what we're going to work on and probably the wheels as well. We'll see if we get to them. So we've got some clean up first. So Ultima Sanders, as always, our Sanders doing a great job cleaning up all the sprue points. Uh, and then a whole multitude of parts to clean up here. A lot of work and a lot of cleanup. Probably a good couple of hours clean up here, easily. So all the parts were cut off the sprues and put in label boxes. And I'm just going through and picking out all the parts I require for today. So the end goal today is get the engine in, suspension in, and the wheels on the car. That is the goal today. So like I say, a lot and lots of parts to clean up. 400 thinny stick from Ultimate, doing the job as usual. Once that's cleaned up, hit it with the rough side of the buffer and then flip that around and hit it with a polisher to get it nice back. It's a nice, clean, shiny plastic. On parts like this, we've sanded this, but because this is the gator on the steering rack, um, we're putting the detail back in with one of the Suji Burrito files that we sell and then hitting it up with my Tammy Extra Thin mix of glue which i show on the channel in another video uh, what we'll do is put the glue on let it soften the plastic then hit it with the brush and the repeated brushing action of the softened plastic will remove that nasty seam line that's in between parts like this it's a quick easy way of dealing with it once done that we've got a 800 customizable now from ourselves at ultimate you can cut these to any shape or size you want uh, and this nice straight edge will do with any straight edge parts like these engine parts that way you don't round anything off, you're not you know, reshaping things or reprofiling edges. Uh, it'll keep it nice and straight. And again, clean it up with the buffer and you're good to go. So for the instructions, we're going to assemble the engine. We're going to do it in easy to manage parts to make painting um, an easy a process as we can. So we're going to assemble the block. We're going to assemble the gearbox with the lower half of the engine in. Then we'll mask that up later. And we'll assemble it all at the end. So just going by the instructions, we're just going to build up the head here. So make sure you get everything the right way. Keep referring to the instructions. So one part in place, the other end in place as well. Like so. Just get them glued in. Just keep referring to instructions. Make sure you get everything the right way around. Some of these parts are handed. So make sure you get them in the correct way. And then on with the side pieces. Again, these are handed, so look at the instructions. Uh, you might have to look further through to make sure, but just double check before you commit to any glue on any part 
that you are putting the right one in the right place. And you're not putting the opposite angle on. As you see, on the far end of this, there's a little lug underneath. And that needs to go uh, specifically on one side of the engine. And you can only see it by looking later on the instructions. So a little bit of detective work. Just have a little forethought. Have a look through. Make sure you're getting the parts together. And then just making sure that we're fitting. And that those Akita points do fit in with supposed to. That way we're confirming what we already knew. That we had these the right way round. So again, pop in place our Tamiya extra thin uh, Plasti Weld mix. Like I said, I've got a video on this on the channel, my mix of glue. And then we're just going to test fit these parts as well. These aren't going to go on now because these will be painted a different colour later on. But we'll just test fit everything, make sure we've got it all assembled right, everything's in the right order. The Fujima kits are okay, they do need a bit of work and a bit of fettling, so just ensure that everything is fitted where you want it. We've already assembled the gearbox, as you can see, pretty straightforward, just following the instructions. Um, and then we can do the block separately and paint all that up later. Now the exhaust back box we glued together, Tamiya Extra Thin Mix, clamped it overnight. Uh, and we've just got one or two little specks need a little bit of filler, so we're going to fill it in with some CA glue. Like so. Got a little couple of dabs on where we can feel there's a slight seam or hole or whatever's there. For the most part, the rest of it, pretty good. We got most of it with the Tamiya Extra Thin Mix. A good clamp with a Bulldog clip, left overnight, sanded, got rid of most of the seam line. But any spots we haven't, we just hit with the CA glue, then hit it with a kicker, and that will instantly dry it, and then we should be filled. We should be good to go, so give it a gentle sand again, buff it back up. And that's ready for primer then. And there you go, we're hitting it with the 400, just gentle. No real pressure at all. Just checking with our fingernail. We don't want to reshape the edge, so any edges that are around it, we use a sponge. Like so. As usual, any products you see me using in the video, you will probably find in the description down below. There's a list linked in the description, so you'll probably find where I'm using in there and where to get it from. With all the parts ready for mounting, uh, we're going to just pop them all in here for safekeeping for now. Quite a lot of parts, this isn't all of them at all, but these are the smaller parts. We're just going to pop them all in here, and then we know where they are. Say the next day, or we're working on a different part like we are here, uh, we know they're all safe and out of the way. Again, on these air hoses, so this is for the filter box to induction of the car. It must be a flexible hose. Um, we've sanded it, we've added the detail back in, and then we're going to get rid of the seam using the Tammy Extra Thin Mix, exactly the same as we did um, on the steering gaiters earlier on. So just put the mix on, let it sit for a minute and melt it, like so, and then just keep brushing, 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 brushing in between those uh, little seams, and it will get rid of that unsightly seam quite quickly and easily without damaging the part as well. Just be careful you don't touch it as you'll put a fingerprint in it. Now we've got some framework that goes around the engine and you could do this two ways. You could either spray it all up separately and glue it in place afterwards or what I prefer to do is the same way I do roll cages is to dry assemble it all now, get it all in place, get it all lined up where we want it and then glue it in place without gluing it to the actual chassis. And that way once the glue sets we can lift it off as one whole unit, paint it then glue it all in place later on. I find it a much easier way to do it. So we've lined all the parts up in the locator holes. We're going to get one side on first. And then once we've done that, we can come in with the other side. And glue that in place as well. There we go. Just hold it for a few seconds. Make sure we're all straight and level. Everything is at the angle we want it at. And once we're happy with that, we repeat that on the other side. And then just hold it. For a few minutes, let the glue work. And then we can remove that in one piece, prime it, paint it separately, and then glue it in together later on at the end. Do exactly the same for the frame underneath. There's a frame on top and underneath, so we offer it all up. And then just glue it in place, hold it, let it sit for a minute, let the glue get a hold of it. And once you're happy, we can take it all off and mount it for spraying. So everything's been mounted up, mostly on cocktail sticks, either pushed into holes or with drilled holes into parts. Uh, or we've got some parts on clips. And we've got some Mr. Service of 1500 Black, 
through our point three apex, 18 PSI. I'm just going to put a couple of light coats down of the Mr. Surfacer to give it a nice base prime coat. So Mr. Surfacer has been thinned about 60-70% with Mr. Hobby level and thinner. Absolutely stinks. Make sure you've got adequate ventilation, a spray booth, a respirator on. Uh, don't be spreading in the room with kids or pets or your family. And just, yeah, a couple of coats. Just build it up, put it all down, let it dry, come back, put another coat on. Two coats should do you with this. It does cover really well. You see how quick it's covering the white there. Don't hose it on. It doesn't need to go on absolutely soaking wet. Just enough that it covers. You can see how well it covers. It does cover really well. Like I say, put a coat down, put it down, move on to another part. By the time you've done all the other parts and come back around, it'll be ready for another coat because being lacquer, it dries really quick. And then once that's dried, good few hours, probably six, seven hours later, we're coming with some Tamiya LP5 now. Um, my pre-thin bottle because it's a paint I use all the time. Thinned about 60% with Tamiya lacquer thinner with Retarder. 0.35 Apex again, 18 PSI again, and just a couple of light coats of the semi-gloss black on all the parts, cool enough for that colour. We've got some decanted Tamiya TS-17. This should be decanted out the spray can. Uh, thinned about 60% with Tamiya, like a thinner retarder. And again, same Apex. Oh, no, we're, not. we're a different Apex now. Sorry, we're on a metallic Apex, uh, which is a 0.2. I prefer the control. A little bit finer spray pattern of metallic, so we don't want to hose this on. Uh, we're at 18 PSI again. I like the TS sprays. Uh, They're very good paints. They are different to the LPs. I find they self-level a little bit better. So they're probably my more go-to choice for larger parts like this. Uh, just making sure we get all those angles and little recesses and what have you. One good coat on. Let that dry five minutes. Come back and we'll do another. And the same for the brake discs as well. So the brakes are a little bit lacking in detail on this. This is where the Fujimi kits let themselves down a touch. Um, they can be a bit soft in detail in areas, but, but on the whole, they're okay. They do give you opportunity for a scratch build, and if you've got a 3D printer, you can really go to town on these. But I enjoy the build. It's a fairly simple build, and you get a nice-looking model at the end. Now, we've got an LP mix of paint here, of gold and silver. I completely forget what colours they are. I do apologise. But it's like champagne gold number 70, or whatever it is, 71 it must be. And I think it's like LP11. Just mixed together to give a slight gold titanium colour. And then we've got LP61 for our gearbox. So I've looked at loads of pictures of the Contash engine. And it shows a, um aluminium block with like a dark grey metallic gearbox. So we're going to spray it up as what I've seen. Avoiding the colour call out on the Fujimi kit a little bit to be honest. Uh, and then we use the same colour on the exhaust as well. A couple of light coats all over will be more than adequate for this. So again, thinned, 60%, Tamiya, lacquer thinner, uh, non-retarder in these because they're metallics. Um, you don't want the metallics to take long to dry. You want them to dry as quick as possible. That way you get the full metallic effect on the top of the paint rather than the pigments sink into the bottom. Now for the engine covers, um, these have been primed in Tamiya White Primer and we're hitting these with the Zero Red Texture Paint because again, looking at a lot of reference pictures, lots of different engines for the Contash. For this particular one, uh, I found one that had red engine covers. and I know red synonymous with Ferrari, but I thought it looked really good. So a couple of light coats and then for the last one, we're taking the airbrush a good foot away and we're just missing it over because I find it adds the textured look a little bit more. Don't spray this stuff on too thick as it will crack and separate. It's a lesson a few of us have learned. So a couple of light coats will do you good. And then texture black, same paint, different colour on um, this cover on top of the engine as well. And again, a couple of light coats down, then bring it back at a distance to get the nice textured effect on top. Now we need to mask the lower half of the engine to match the upper block. So, so using some Tamiya 1, 2 and 3 mil tape. We're going to mask the outline. Quite simple to do. Nothing really dramatic to show you. And then we'll infill the rest with the 6, 12, uh, 10 and 18 mil as well. Until we're fully masked and ready for some more TS-17 again. That way the engine matches the block. It's how they look in the pictures. And it's what I've chosen to do in this particular instance. Springs. Now these are never easy to spray. I've tried various methods over the years. I found this probably the easiest is to put them on here on double on 
masking tape, spray them, put a fresh bit down, spin around, spray them again, repeat, rinse with the colour. We're going to do them in red, again, to match our engine cover. So Tamiya Pink Primer, getting all those angles. Make sure we get everywhere. Once it's dry, we'll spin it around, just spray the end lightly, and then we'll come in later with some red. TS-17 on this engine block now as well. A couple of light coats. We've already got paint down. We've already got primer down, so we don't need to go crazy here. It'll cover really quick. Again, 0.2 mil apex. Just nice thin coats, just building it up. And then the red for the spring. So this is Mr. Color. I am going to guess it's three. I've had this decanted in that dropper bottle for years because all ever gets used for is springs, brake calipers, and fire extinguishers on cars. That's it. And it's literally starting to run out. So, yes, this is probably one of the last times I'll use this and I'll have to mix a new load. But again, a couple of coats down, two, three light coats, and we'll spin it around and paint the bottom as well. Covers super fast over the pink primer. One of the benefits of using pink. Now we're going to detail paint the very top of the engine where the spark plugs go in, um, where our uh, HT leads will sit. And we've got some Vallejo uh, Silver with the Winsor Newton brush. I'm a little bit too zoomed in. Do apologise. I figured it out here, but I do forget later on, and I'm zoomed in as well. Uh, so that's painted up, and we're going to go with some assembly of the car now. So the kit comes with a metal rod that the brake discs attach on. Like I say, this is where the kit lets itself down a touch. This is where the detail's a little bit lacking, because as you'll see here now, the caliper goes on, and it's nowhere near the disc, and it doesn't overhang the edge. It's literally to be able to be seen from the inside of the wheel because you can't see through the wheel on this um but this is where the kits let themselves down a touch because the detail is just not quite there like i said with a 3d printer you could do a good job on these but i'm more than happy building these out of the box they're, they're a nice kit to build they do a good subject we'll provide a bit more detail to the engine later on but overall they build up quite well let's be honest this isn't a highly visible part um unless you're picking the car up and looking underneath you're not going to see the discs at all so yeah a little bit fiddly this to do so yes so we're going to pop that in line on top and just give it a gentle whack there we go that's a tactical whack and there we go we are in place like so so with the transmission all assembled we're going to put a couple of dabs of Siego. so our loctite uh, craft pen, I think they're called. Now let me grab it because they change names and I keep forgetting. Let's have a look. Creative, sorry. Loctite Super Creative, it's called now. So it's in the little tube box applicator thing. I think I really need to renew my link on my list of products. A couple of dabs in there, get it in place, and then we're coming with our frames that we built up earlier. The ones that we pre glued together and sprayed separately. And they all line up absolutely perfectly, top and bottom. So that's those in place. And these little supports to hold the radiators just sit in the edge there. Like so. There we go, just line those up. Now, the springs. We sprayed the springs up. You've got to be careful, they are delicate. Um, suspension's not bad, it doesn't work. But the springs look good. So it's a case of holding the spring down while you pop in this little collet in the top. So the easiest way to do it is to put it on your bench, push down with one hand and pop it in with the other. And hey presto, there we go. So there's four struts and springs on the back, two on the front. So just a couple of locating points here. They're a little bit tricky to get in place. Take your time. And again, I am zoomed in a little bit too much. I do apologize. Every now and then, because this camera rolls all day long um when we're live and everything i'm distracted by other things so i'm probably filming sunday's live show here or last wednesday's live show and i'm chatting away to everybody and not realizing the camera's there it's multitasking at its best but sometimes i look up and think ah, damn i haven't zoomed in too far i haven't zoomed in enough i've zoomed in too far or what i did quite a lot on this one not click record because i'm a bit of a plonker but anyway, we're all in place there. Still zoomed in a bit. I figure out in a bit and we zoom back out. Probably a little bit too far, actually. Um, but yeah, when your mind's elsewhere, it's easy to forget things like this. So we've got a little few cross-member bits to put in place here. There's three of them. One at the very front there. 
on the gearbox and one at the very back which you can just about see so a little dab of Sego, spread the chassis apart just a touch and then one just here as well now you may notice the on off switch you can see it up ahead that's where the motorized original kit would have had its on off switch i did toy with getting rid of it and i could have got rid of it super simple using a chisel um before do you know what a little bit of nostalgia i kind of like that so i'm going to leave it in it would have taken me two seconds to whip off uh and i thought no i'm going to leave that because it's a kind of a little throwback to what these originally were just motorized kits and a couple of mine have still got the motor with them um which would have been great fun to play with i suppose if you were into that um but yes i thought i'd leave her on for a little bit of nostalgia i'll never look underneath but it's always there if somebody does two radiators to do so we've got the radiator the fan the fan shroud and the back a couple of dabs of ca glue in place pop it in it needs a little bit of persuasion to fit in place just hold it you may find it moves and just needs pushing back again and then onto the front discs and hubs as well. So these screw in place. So screws come with the kit. It's a case of just get that in there like so. And then we screw it in place. This is a screwdriver from our 12 scale skyline. So always keep your tools, you never know they're gonna be useful. Screw it in just enough so it only just moves. And then a little dab of shake on the back, and we pop the front caliper over the disc as well. Again, nowhere near the disc at all. It's a real shame, but it's just there to imitate it, I suppose. And then we line up the hub, top and bottom, in its locating point. Just make sure it's pushed fully home, like so. We put the steering rack on as well, which does actually click. There's a little part inside it clicks on, so it does hold itself. Um, and then our front suspension in place now as well. A little bit trickier, this one. Takes a little bit of care. So just get it, push the top down first, and then push it in to its locating point at the top. And then there's a lower subframe. Couple of dabs of Sego underneath. Push it in place. Very, very positive fitment on this. You could probably put it in place without glue. And then get the hubs in place like so. Make sure they're pushed fully home on both sides. And there we go. Make sure everything's glued, everything's straight, everything's in its position. HT lead now. Right, okay, so big distributor cap on this. 12 cylinder car, so we've got 12 leads to sort. So the way the instructions say is cut it into equal lengths, the supplied wire, which is very good actually, and then feed them through so you've got equal lengths. Now, one or two did end up a bit short, and we kind of did have to go out of the fire in order which instructions actually do give um but i kind of started to run out of this stuff now when it comes out the distributor cap i'm going to add a little bit of heat shrink to imitate the end of the ht lead plug so i'm just cutting these to fairly equal lengths and then we'll slip them over the lead and push them onto the distributor itself and i'll just imitate the ht lead where it plugs onto the top of the distributor so we just slot these over the top, slide them all in place. Once we're happy they're all in, we'll hit it with our lighter um, on a very low flame. My little jet lighter has a neat little trick where it doesn't have to go on full flame. So it's a case of pop them on, slide them fully home. Once you're happy they're all in place, we'll heat shrink them and they'll pretty much hold themselves where they are. And it'll look a lot better than the wire just going into the distributor because the wires don't go into the distributors on these really. So fully pushed home, using the tweezers, make sure everything's level and straight, using the thumbnail. And then on my gas uh, jet lighter, if I don't, if I light it and then take it off or hold it back a little bit, I get ever such a small flame, which is hot enough to melt the heat shrink without damaging everything else. A little bit of glue to hold the distributor on its mount, and then a little dab of CA glue to hold the whole mount in place as well. And then it's a case of feeding all the lines, uh, the leads into their holes. And like I say, the instructions did call out the firing order. <laughs> this isn't going to run, so it doesn't really matter. It runs a bit lumpy. Um, some of them were a bit short, so I had to kind of change swings around a little bit. But they're going in. They're going in nice and simple. What we'll do, get them all lined up, and then we'll secure them from underneath later on. So we're just going to make sure we get them all in place. 
that are all neat. Engine's looking good. The red uh, cam covers are looking really nice. Like in those, like in the red uh, lead as well. Good colour combo. I know it's more Ferrari-esque, but it look good on this. And I've seen a lot of them with the red covers, so that's the way we're going to do it. And there we go. So it's all wired up. We've kind of got all the leads nice and neat. And I've got some very, very thin copper wire. Uh, and some cutters that my good friend Ali Callis gave me. Cheers, buddy. And we're going to pop this underneath, fold it around, and twist it together. And that will hold together our wires in some sort of order. And we'll put one in a few places on each lead. And just spin it and spin it. And then once you've got it as tight as you can, pinch it with your fingertip right up close to the wire. Like so. And then give it a final few spins. And that will get it nice and tight. I thought that will do. Keep the HT leads nice and uh, neat. They'll look a lot better. And we can just snip the excess off. Don't go too close. Snip the excess off. And we'll repeat that along the way. And then once we're happy, we'll drop some UV glue into the bottom. Make sure the HT leads where we want them. Pop this in. And then hit it with UV light to secure it in place. Now, the reason for using the UV is it's not as permanent as CA glue. If I need to move these, I can get them back out. Uh, if something's not quite right, it, you know, it's, it's manageable rather than, oh, well, I'm going to have to start again. So I do like UV glue. It's not as permanent, but it still holds things in more than adequate. So with all the engine, HT leads all nine neatly held by that wire. They're looking really smart. I'm just making sure that we've got all the leads where we want them. They're looking really, really good. Very happy with those. Looking nice. There we go. Happy with that. Then we've got our car breaths on the top. Now, for some reason, don't know what happened. All six of these go in. They go in a specific order. Two at the end are different to the four in the middle. Um, my camera stopped and I didn't get the rest of the footage when we put them in. So it's a repeat of that one. So imagine me doing that six times. And that's what you're about to see if you close your eyes. Mm, about now. With those in place and the cover on top that we did in the texture black earlier. We've got some Tamiya black panel line wash. You now a wash. We've thinned it a touch with some Sansador mineral spirits. And we're just going to give everything metallic a light wash all over let it dry remove the excess and it adds a nice bit of depth to the engine uh, and takes away a bit of that toy look well it should do whether it does is a matter of opinion and uh yeah we just go around apply the wash anywhere and everywhere we can and let that dry it takes about 20 30 minutes depending on the temperature to dry very fast drying enamel wash of course, we're using it over lacquer, so it's perfectly safe. There we go. If it hold a wash, put a wash in it. That's my motto. Nice and simple and easy to use. And again, all the brake discs, all the gearbox, etc., etc. Also, get the gearbox as well. With thinning it, I find the capillary action works a little bit better and you have less wash that you need to remove, if that makes sense. When using out of the bottle, it can be quite thick, although I have thinned the bottle and you can end up with a thick wash that needs a lot of work to remove. With thinning it a bit, the capillary action carries it more uh, and I find it just works better on the whole as a wash. So I do tend to thin it quite a lot. The only exception is door shuts because I want a nice thick wash to work so cotton bud moistened with a little bit of santador from windsor newton which is an odorless mineral spirit we go around with a cotton bud and just remove any excess wash where we don't want it should leave it in all the recesses all around all the raised areas and just give us a nice bit of weathering add a bit of depth to the metallic work and on the whole it just makes it look a lot better like I say, my motto is if I hold a wash, put a wash in it, because it does make a big difference. Um, Tamiya panel line washes aren't the easiest to get in the UK. Um, they're not officially imported. 
So have a look around, see where you can get them from. And for me, you only really need the black and the grey because that's all I tend to use anyway. There we go. Same on the gearbox, just gentle. You're not scrubbing it, you're just wiping it off. Let the uh, mineral spirits do the job and get rid of the excess. Exhausts glued in place, so they're all the other side. And this is the final side to pop in. They need to sit in the manifold properly and then sit next to each other at the back. They're a bit fiddly to do. And the exhaust tips. Now, the exhaust tips aren't great. This is them. They're horrible chrome pieces that you've got to glue together. They look nasty and horrible. So, take your measurements here. They are slash cut. I've decided to change that. I've got some aluminium tubing. If you remember, we used this on the Ferrari 288, I think it was. Um, so we're going to use it exactly the same on this. It's the perfect size for this. So we cut off with our razor saw. It's soft aluminium, so the razor saw is fine. Cleaned it up with the UMP 400 thinny stick. Then we've got our reamer to ream out the end to add a bit of a thinness to the wall. And then we've got some Meguiar's all metal polish on a carbon fiber cloth. So hold it on one of our cotton buds, pop it in the uh, carbon fiber cloth with the uh, polish. And then just spin it around. A little bit of pressure by your thumb and forefinger. Now don't be shocked. It's probably going to go black. It's what things do when they're polished. That's how it works. So... We're just trying to get the imperfections off and get a bit of a shiny tip. So just keep spinning it and spinning it and spinning it and then rub it off on a clean part. Here we are. So four of these to do. So fun fact. There we go. That's that done. I'd already done four and then looked up and realized the camera wasn't rolling. So I have to make another one. So there you go. I made a spare one just for you. A little dab of CA glue. Make sure you get the exhaust the right way around, the way that we ream them out, and they are absolutely perfect fit for this. So pop them in place, make sure they're straight, angled the way you want them, like so. And then move on to the next one, and just follow suit all the way through until they're all in place, and uh, appropriately spaced and straight. So quite lucky on this that they actually fitted. That it literally couldn't be any better a size to fit in the original hole for the exhaust. So really happy about that. Otherwise we'd have ordered more and it would have held us up a little bit on this video. Yeah, make sure we've got the right way. Pop it in. Let the glue grab it. Get the equal distance between them. Make sure it's straight. Definitely looks good. And then repeat that for the other two. And once we're happy at the end. Um, we'll grab a ruler, straight edge, make sure that they're all equidistant and straight how we want them, and then put that to one side to dry. Now, the engine block that we did earlier literally clips in place. It pushes in place on top. Completely forgot to get any footage over, but it does literally push in place. No glue, it just pushed in place perfectly. So, literally, we popped it on and it's that done. Now, the wheels. Now, looking at these wheels, I think when I reviewed it, I maybe hinted that maybe I'll keep this finish, and it's a beautiful finish for chroming. Problem was, there was marks on them. Uh, there was a few scratches here and there, so I thought, okay, I'm going to refinish them. So, cut them off the sprue, we'll clean them up with the nippers, and then come in with the uh, Ultima 400 Thinny Stick, and clear off those sprue locator points like so. And get them all nice and neat. And then we're going to bleach them and get all the chrome off. So I noticed a few flaws on the face of the wheel as well. So we've got some 8,000 uh, micro mesh on the flat bench. And just give it a little bit of a spin round. And it will get that face nice and flat again. There we go. And we'll repeat that for all four of them. Then we've got a medicine cup. Popped all the wheels in. We've got some cheap Asda thick bleach. And you'll literally watch this stuff come off before your eyes. So I find the cheaper the th and thicker the bleach, the easier it is to get the chrome off. So this is just cheap, nasty Asda. That's Walmart for anyone not in the UK. Uh, if you just watch it, you'll see it start to disappear. So there you go. Thick bleach, 24-hour protection, citrus burst. There you go. Hey, fancy.
fancy glue. Glue bleach. So keep watching the bleach and you'll see. Slowly starts to go and then it really does speed up. So I think I give her a little bit of a stare about now. There we go. Let's make sure everything's underneath. And then you can see the chrome starting to come off. So it's like magic, this. Works really well. Now, bleach lever strip the chrome in seconds like this. Days or not at all. And then you'll have to go nuclear then. Now, luckily on the Fujimi chrome, there's none of the horrible varnish underneath. Um, so we didn't have to remove that. So we just left this in here to do its business. Probably for, what, a minute, two minutes? And, uh, yeah, worked perfectly. And there we go. Stripped. We've washed them under fresh water, cleaned them all off. And we're going to mount them in place on the wheels. Now, this is a big mistake. Don't do this. I mistakenly thought that the tyres were nice and flexible on this kit. And they're not. They're very rigid. So we're going to have to cut the back of the wheel off later. Just trim the very back off to get them in place. But it doesn't make any difference at all. Now, I've already decided on the paint colour. And we need to paint these in GX2 Gloss Black. So this is Mr. Hobby's high pigment, high shine gloss paint. So I'm going to put several light coats down, getting all the angles, all the sides, all the side of the rims as well, inside as well. And what we want here now is a very nice gloss finish, which we will get. So put one coat down, put it down five minutes, ten minutes, come back, another coat. And on the final coat, put a nice wet coat down. But we just want to make sure we get all the angles and get everywhere covered which is probably the most important thing. Let's put that down, put another coat on the same, then come back 10 minutes later and put a nice wet coat down to end up with a nice glossy black wheel like we've got here. Now, looking at this now, I thought, ooh, what will these gloss black wheels look like on that white body? And I thought, hmm, they might look really smart. But I'd already picked the silver colour. We've used them on wheels before. We used a silver plate next for Mr. Hobby on the Cobra wheels. And I just thought, I've got to use it on this. This is a brand new bottle. Myself, Simon and Alan from the Light Crew sourced these from Japan. They cost a fortune. Cost us about £18 a bottle to get it. But this paint is phenomenal. So, I've thinned this before with lacquer thinner. On the box, it's now translated. It says, do not thin. And smelling them, they smell like alcohol-based paints. So, I'm going to do this unthinned, just as it asks. So, we're going to give it a good shake-up. And then a good mix up with the Badger paint mixer to get all those pigments off the bottom of the bowl. Like so. And then we've got our 0.2ml Apex, 18 PSI. I'm just going to put a couple of light coats down, building up. Now this colour is fantastic. The finish off this paint is phenomenal. It's beautiful. I've been waiting to use it for a while. Look around the pictures of the Contasha's wheels. They vary in colour, but a lot of them seem to be quite a high shine, which is what the chrome was that we took off. So I thought, this is perfect. This will do the job great. So I'm just going to put it down, nice and light, leave for five, ten minutes, come back, about three coats in total, get the insides as well. So this is after probably our second coat, I think it is. Just having a little look. Might even be the third coat, actually. And as you can see, that colour is phenomenal. Absolutely beautiful. It's a very hard to describe colour, but it's just absolutely stunning and perfect for this. Now, this is a very delicate paint. You're going to have to leave this to dry for at least 24 hours before you start handling it. Uh, you put thick coats of the GX2 down. We let that dry for a good six, seven hours. And then with that stuff as well, it takes a lot longer to dry. So leave it to one side. I left it overnight. Uh, in the meantime, clean up the tyres, which I made the mistake of thinking were nice and flexible. They're not. These things are rock hard. <laughs> so we're going to have to adapt the wheels in a bit. And by adapting, I'm just going to trim the very back edge of the wheel off so I can push it on from the front. You're not going to see it. It's not going to make any difference at all. Um, it's just a mistake on my part. I've got a tyre de -seaming tool here. Somebody very kindly sent me. I think it was Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. A good while back. I do believe a cuticle remover will do the same job. I'm just going to remove all that and slightly rubber from the very centre of the tyre. We've got rid of all the wisps of rubber from the inside with our knife as well. And we're going to do this for each one. Clean it all up. Like so. 
And then we're coming with our 240, 220 Ultima Grey Sander. And just rough up all the edges. Now what I did notice is obviously these kits are old. This kit's over 30 years old. There was a bit of residue on the tyres, like a sticky residue. So I've got some Mr. Hobby level and thinner. I've already tested it on a nice clean um, cotton pad. And I'm just going around and wiping all that residue off. And it came up absolutely brand new. Really did. So they were great. Air cleaners, painted semi gloss black. We painted the very edge to simulate the clips uh, in silver as well. We've assembled it and these just glue in place like so. They just float in the air. So you just got to line them up to eye. Like so. And then repeat for the other side. Looking good, the engine. Not bad at all. Now, we do have some parts to add later on. Um, probably hoses and that, so we'll add those later. Um, we'll have a chat about those in a little bit. Tires are on. Literally all done is trim the very back of the rim off. It's just a little edge at the back. Push the tires over the top, and I'm detail painting the road nuts now with X. Sorry, LP61. We're using the metallic iron color just to simulate our road nuts. So very gentle painting. We'll repeat that for all of them, like so. And then some Vallejo model color. Black. We'll do our tire valves. Whether they're black on these, I don't know. I chose to do black, so that's what we're doing. As you see, the crawl of those wheels is absolutely stunning. That paint is so good, so nice. Very expensive, but it just looks absolutely beautiful. It really, really does. So some careful painting there, and then Tamiya panel line wash again. Thin to touch. Just let the capillary reaction fill all those little recesses in. We'll let it dry. Wipe off the excess. And um, we're good to go. This has been filmed over, I don't know, let me see. Probably got five days work here. I started work on this and then finished the skyline off. So five separate days over a couple of weeks, probably. Our exhaust, the tips we made, we're going to paint the inside black. So using that model color black we used on the tires, tire valves rather. We're just going to paint the inside of a micro brush, like so, quick and simple. And then we'll wipe off any excess paint with a clean cotton bud. So we don't want on the edge of the exhaust tips. Now, I'm not going to glue the exhaust in place yet because I've got a feeling if I hit it, I'll end up knocking things off. So we're going to leave it for now. But we are going to test fit the body. So we're going to pop this in place. Now, there's two locating points. The front one's nice and secure and positive. The back one's a bit crap, if I'm honest. Um, it doesn't sit how you'll think it'll sit because it makes the car sit too low, which you'll see in a minute. So while I'm filming, I've got the car sat too low. I realized off camera and took a picture. So I'll pop the picture up at the end for you. So it's a little bit tricky to get in place. This needs a bit of careful work. The doors are on. Well, they were. They fell off now. So there you go. Get the back end in first, then slot the front in. Like I said, the front locates really positively. This back end's a bit pants, to be honest. Not very good. Um, but we get the front end. As you see, the front just clips over the top. It's got two clips to hold it. There you go. Perfectly. But the back end, I was a bit unsure as to where it's at. But it's looking good. The engine looks really good for the cover. Um, transmission looks good. We've got a bit of wiring and hosing we can add in later, which we will do later on. I don't want to put it in now because I don't want to foul anything when I'm putting it together. So once we're together, we'll pop it in place. Uh, the wheels are dry for a good 20 minutes. So I'm just going to gently wipe off any excess wash with a cotton bud. Wheels look beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And again, we're not going to fully fit these yet. We're just going to place them in. They need glue in place. Now the problem with the interior is we're going to have to flock some of the interior. And it's not a separate part. So we're going to have to flock it with the engine in place and everything. So we're going to have to cover things up. And I don't want to glue the wheels in place and get paint on them or flock. So we're going to leave them off for now. But I did put them on just to test fit. Now, the front sits perfect because the front's lined up perfect. But the back, you see the clip on the very back is inside. And it makes the back end sit in too much. So the front spot on. 
I think the front sits just absolutely perfect. But the back's in there just a little bit too low. And it's only when I uploaded all the footage to the Mac and started editing that I looked at it and thought, ah, okay. The clip on the back end doesn't go inside. I think it goes outside. So it's looking good. The wheelbase looks good. Everything fits in. So that's a good front end spot on. After I realised, I took a picture on the side on, and you see it's raised the back end just that little bit more, and that looks a lot better. But there we are for today. Let's go back to me. Right, and there we go. That's where we're at today. So I think it looks all right. Not too bad. Very happy with that wheel colour. It's a beautiful colour. It's a shame that paint's not more readily available, but it isn't. You can't get it in the UK full stop, and it's hard to source even outside the UK, uh, which is a real shame, but it's a beautiful colour. It's so nice. It's perfect for these wheels. Literally couldn't be any better a colour. It's a real shame the kick chrome is damaged because it looked really, really good. But there's just a few scratches. Uh, I just thought I wouldn't be happy leaving it. And it did look a bit more toy-like. This looks a lot better. It's in the display case at the top of there. I mean, it's safely out of the way. And just looking from here, it's, it's such a good colour. It really does suit the car really well. And I'm not going to lie. When I saw that gloss black, I thought... Lost back rims on a white car. That would look good. And I thought, no. Let's stick with the plan. And let's go with the original silver plate next. Very unusual colour for Mr. Hobby. Um, but it turned out well. Engines turned out well. Like I say, a bit more detail we'll possibly add later on. But right now, I don't want to commit to that. Because I don't want to foul things later on. Get things in the way and have to remove all our hard work. So we'll probably add a bit of scratch building later on. So the next part on this is the interior. Now, I'm toying with the idea of a red interior. So, Bordeaux red uh, leather, you know, door cards, and what have you, red carpet. Mm, don't know. Open to suggestions. Pop them in the chat. I don't want to go black. Black's boring. We did black on the Ferrari, did we? We did. We did do black on the Ferrari. I want to go colour. I think colour on the white will look good. So, I'm thinking red. Somebody did mention blue, and that's a very 70s colour blue. So, hmm. We'll have a think. We'll have a little think about that one, see what we can get. Um, now, what's next? I've got so much to do on On The Go, it's crazy. This is turning into proper work. <laughs> now, because, um, yes, number, numerous things. So, I'm going to do it to the C9 next. It's probably the next one I'm going to get to. And we've got all the engine to do on that, and the running gear on that. I've also got two commission builds to do. One from my buddy Luke uh, Carswell. And that's the Tamiya M45B. Um, and one for a guy called Ben. He wants a um, Rothmans 956 Porsche doing as a present for his dad, which is very good of him. Um, so I'm probably going to work on the C9. I always vowed to do the McLaren for Luke after the C9. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick to that. It's a lot of work in that McLaren. The Rothmans one, the Porsche, is going to be a bit simpler because it's an artillery kit. I know, I know. Sorry, Ben, if you're watching, but you'll know it's not going to be a great kit. I'll make the best job of it I can. Um, so when that comes, I'll probably just jump straight into that, get that done in one here. I'll film it. It'll become a video so you can see it. Um, and we'll get that out there. Um, and then we'll keep switching around. But I want to get to that McLaren quite quick. So once the Italieri commission's done, I might finish the C9. Do the McLaren, then come back to the Countach. We'll see. I don't need to do the McLaren until like early next year, so I've got plenty of time. But I don't want any pressures on me because pressure gets to me quite a bit. Um, I don't normally, normally do commissions, and I've taken two on. Uh, a necessary evil, unfortunately, um, because it can pay well. And uh, yeah, it's one of those need needs doing, and that's why I'm doing it. So if you want a commission doing, contact me. I'll always have a chat with you about it. You're not going to get it cheap. I'm not, I'm not ridiculously expensive, uh, but you're not going to get it absolutely dead cheap because I think a lot of people are a bit, what's the word, don't understand the amount of work required to build some of these models. To a good standard anyway. It takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of hours as well. I mean, just just one part here is nine hours of footage and that's not everything I've done because I don't film every single second of the build. So it's probably a good 12 hours of work just to do this one part, and there'll be four parts of this build at least. So that's 48 hours. You know, it's a long time. If you did that on an hourly wage, you'd never get any commission build. So 
Anyway, one of those. I've gone on a bit of a tangent here. I'm just explaining the build order in case you think, what the hell is going on? So, yes, that's what you're going to do. So, you're going to see some interesting things over the coming months. Um, definitely. So, stay tuned uh, if you want to be a part of that. Also, if you want to support the channel and the videos, um, and it does need the support. I've made a video on this before saying how important this is. Uh, there's a Patreon me link in the description down below. But we can't, without my patrons, I wouldn't be able to do these videos. They'd have to stop. They really would because... Um, it's what's paying me to do it, which is what it is now. It's become a job now, actually making videos and models, which it really wasn't before, but it is now. And I'm relishing that because it gives me a goal to do. And it's nice to now finally get something other than recognition for doing this work. And this is work. Believe it or not, this is a lot of work to do. Um, and it's immensely draining because the hours I put in equate to a full-time job, which is what my video is about. So if you'd like to support my videos... There's a Patreon me link in the description down below. Any support is greatly received. Seriously, it, it, yeah, let's not get into that. Uh, and there's a PayPal me link as well. And there's all different kinds of benefits for this. Uh, they're all listed. Free monthly live stream, exclusive to patrons. You get to vote on builds, vote on reviews. There's giveaways, um, all sorts of stuff there listed. Uh, and if you want to have a look, please click on the links down below and uh, have a look at that. I'll be doing a bench update very soon, going over what I've just talked about a bit more in depth, um, builds that we've finished. I'm going to talk about the patron tier system a bit more, obviously, because I need to sell this, so I've got to talk about it. As much as I hate talking about it, I have to, and now I'm waffling like hell. So, there we are. Check out the Skull Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, and get a lot of products I use in these videos. My Paul ISM page, where you can see all my personal and modeling work. And the International Scale Modeler group build page, Live at the Bench page, and Offer Hangout group as well. Everything I've mentioned is linked in the description down below. Please leave a comment on the video. I appreciate all the comments. Sorry about the waffle. You know, I like to talk, and I'll go off on one all day long if I talk. Um, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you want to do. And make sure you sub to the channel and click the bell notification. And I'll see you very soon. So enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you liked the video. Sorry for the waffle, and I'll catch you all later.